ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another fine installment of the League of XCOM, Operation Driving Priest. Now you might notice that the map is different than Episode 8. That's because I actually closed out of XCOM, and when I reopened it, I had to reselect the missions. And I selected the same one to get my uh, heavy. It actually gave me a different map, and I didn't know that it did that. I start this mission off similar to the last one. I'm going to have Alistar move up and throw Battle Scanner. But before he has a chance to throw the Battle Scanner, we're going to find some Sectoids, just like in the last mission. Poppy will take the other full cover, and Trundle will try to flank around. And then I'm going to set up Caitlyn, who's an 80% rookie, and a Moomoo uh, behind the truck. With an 80% shot and light cover, that reduces her to 60, and she's going to take a shot. And the rest of the squad goes on Overwatch. On the aliens turn, they mine merge, and just sit there for some reason. I move up Caitlyn and take a 40% shot at the mine melding alien. Because that missed, I'm going to now try to do it with a Moomoo. And that takes care of the first three. Now that we have that taken care of, I'm going to move Ballastar and throw a battle scanner. And we find six more aliens. Poppy's rocket launcher shows that it's barely out of range, so I'm going to move her up a bit. Making sure not to disturb the peaceful alien wildlife. Trundle takes Alistar's spot to cover him. And I pass the churn. Three floaters for a rocket is a pretty good deal, so I'm going to take it. I now overwatch and reload the guys that need it. I'm hoping the next group of floaters will come closer to me and into my sight. Although they are still able to be picked up by the battle scanner, the battle scanner dies so I can't shoot them. So I'm going to throw my second battle scanner and if they stay there, Alistar is going to shoot them to surprise them so they hopefully will move up into my kill zone. And we're just going to pass pretty much here. We're going to set everybody to overwatch and reload the guns that need to be reloaded. Floaters have other plans as they go to the other side of the map. And I can see another group of sectoids. So with that, we're just going to move up a little closer and closer till eventually we find one group and not the other. If we engage both groups, there's a chance that we might lose somebody, but if we only engage one group, there's a good chance we won't lose anybody, and then we'll be able to engage the last group. Because I think there's only 12 aliens on this map. So with that, we're going to spend the next three to four turns moving up slowly on the aliens until hopefully we can trigger one or the other. The floaters continue to teleport, and so do the sectoids. But this time, the sectoids seemingly have spotted us somehow, even though, you know, they're across the map. But, you know, whatever, XCOM, do your thing. With the sectoids being triggered, we can hope for them to suicide rush into us, and that's my plan here. Set everybody to overwatch and hope the suicidal sectoids run into the overwatch zone. Unfortunately, it appears the sectoids aren't taking the bait. And if the sectoids don't come to us, we'll come to the sectoids. And the floaters trigger, somehow. Uh, I don't really know what this bug does or how it works, but it seems to randomly trigger aliens and... Uh, the one thing I can say though is the floaters are much, much more suicidal than sectoids. The floater is probably the most bloodthirsty alien out there, so if we just hold our ground, they're gonna come to us, and if we're in full cover, nobody should die, and we should be able to pick up them. And then uh, three sectoids are a pretty low threat at this point, even on Iron Man Impossible. The floaters see red, and they fly at us. But my Overwatch misses. It's not going to do anything. Trundle wounds the alien. And Caitlyn picks up another free kill. Jeez, you killed two aliens, Caitlyn. You're going to start keeping score now? And more bloodthirsty floaters appear. 
This time, they actually move and fire, but they leave their flank exposed, so it should be an easy pickup. And one of the sectoids shows up for suicide charge with a floater. But his charge is soon ended by Alistar's supreme aim. And with the floater being completely exposed, Trundle takes a shot. With that, we only have one floater left. And this guy, uh... This guy is definitely the smartest of the bunch. He, uh, he moves up, and instead of shooting, he simply goes on Overwatch. And, uh... I mean, yeah, that'll work. Trundle takes a shot. I make a big mistake here and forget that he's on Overwatch. And Caitlyn takes 5 damage. So it's up to Alistar to clean it up once again. And we have a Mumutas, a smoke grenade. With 40% defense from full cover and 20 from the smoke grenade, that means there's only a 5% chance the soldiers will be hit from sectoids. Caitlyn backs up for a pep talk about what she just did. Adamumu gives her a hard slap in the face. At this point, with all the floaters gone, there's only a couple sectoids left. So, I don't want to lose anybody. We're going to just make a slow push going from full cover to full cover until we find them. One of the remaining sectoids moves up for cover and takes overwatch. But we have Trundle and with lightning reflexes we can easily bypass that. We get behind some full cover and we're going to take a double shot. The first one will miss, but the second one will definitely nail him. And the last sectoid is the smartest, as he goes on hidden overwatch. Alistar takes a shot to end the mission, but is unable to connect. I'm all right. So I move up to cover to make sure it's clear, use run and gun, and finish out the mission. Mexico, Russia, and France go completely bonkers. And with no satellites, that isn't very good. Seriously, what? Three nations? Come on. Back at base, I have plenty of promotions to give out. Poppy's amazing rocketeering skills have allowed her to become a captain. She has a choice between Grenadier and Danger Zone. Although Grenadier is pretty good, I find that I never really give grenades, uh... To my heavies, I find that I like to give them nano shield, or med kits, or even chitinous plating to make them more durable. Because uh, you want to move them up close to the enemy and suppress. And if they get hit, you want them to be more tougher. And danger zone, in my opinion, is really good because you can hit more than just like three aliens. You can actually hit like six or seven easily with it if you set it up right. So I'll be taking a danger zone for Poppy because it's a lot better. And I never use grenades past, like, the first six missions. Uh, for Trundle, he actually gains four aim, which is the only thing I'm really excited about. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. He has a chance between Colos, Combat Specialist, and Bring Him On. I find that Bring Him On is kind of not very good because you're already usually going to kill whatever you are going to kill. Uh, however, though, Close Combat Specialist is simply amazing at uh, dealing with chrysalids, zombies... Uh, Berserker Mutons, uh, it just allows an extra shot, even if you're next to a door and an alien runs through it, you can shoot them, so I find that it's actually very useful, so I'll be picking that up instead. Uh, again, I just don't feel that I need more firepower on assaults. Uh, speaking of assaults, Caitlyn is a sniper, no she's not, I'm just kidding, uh, she's gonna follow the footsteps of Trundle and become an assault. 
The thing about Kaylin though is she has 85 aim as a squatty, which is pretty high. The highest I've seen is 87 on a squatty sniper, so she's really going to be lethal and accurate. And she gets two days in sick bay because she hit an overwatch. With that, we get Lieutenant Rengar, a heavy. Oh boy, you guys know what this is. It's a terror mission. But we're prepared for this. We have laser rifles, so it shouldn't be too difficult. And I can probably get through it unscathed. I'm going to pick up squad size 6, as this will allow me to carry an extra gun into the fight. I'm going to first have to sell some things, though. Okay, I'm going to have to sell some more things. And it's time to load out my squad for the terror mission. Because it's a terror mission and anything can go wrong, I'm actually looking for will at this point. I want to find a good mix of will and aim. So I go through every rookie to find good will and aim. Uh, it turns out the Pantheon actually is probably the best. as He has about 65 aim and about 50 will. Uh, mind you, 40 will is the starting rookie. So uh, anything above 40 is above average. And then we look at uh, Rengar and we level him up and we see 61 aim, which is complete utter garbage. This game has trolled me once again by giving me Trundle, a man with 67 aim, which is too higher than Rookie. And now Lieutenant Rengar, who has 61 aim. Anyways, we'll be taking Pantheon because he's got 59 will, so he won't panic in a tough situation. And he's got 65 aim, which is standard, so that should be good for this mission. And plus, uh, he's actually been on other missions, so if he completes this mission, even if he doesn't kill anybody, he'll still get a rank up. Please join me next time for Operation Cold Night, which is going to be a terror mission. As always, please subscribe and comment if you liked the video. And if you didn't like the video, please comment and let me know what you didn't like about the video.